Welcome to Top 10 USA, home of the Rocket Platform. Please follow our installation procedures and be sure to use appropriate ESD standards and techniques throughout the installation process. If these procedures are not followed appropriately, damage to your SAN as well as data loss may occur. If your machine is covered under the Rocket Plus subscription and you have any questions or concerns, please open a ticket through the Rocket Platform customer portal. Thank you for purchasing your pre-configured Dell Equalogic SAN from the Rocket Platform. This instructional is to help you with the installation of your new array. With the purchase of the pre-configured system, you are also provided with a rack mount kit designed for your system. Take the kit and insert it into the desired rack position. Once the rails have been secured, locate the chassis. The chassis will have the power supplies and control modules already installed into the rear of the chassis. Insert the chassis into the rack where you have just installed the rails. Once the chassis is in place, remove the faceplate. To remove the faceplate, take the Dell issued key and turn the lock in a clockwise direction. Next to the lock is a black tab. Lift up on the black tab and the faceplate locking mechanism will release, allowing you to remove the faceplate. On the front of the bezels, you will see two mounting screw holes. Take the screws provided and secure the chassis to the rack. Now that the chassis has been inserted, you will need to install the drives into the chassis. The drives were left out of the chassis to prevent any damage to the drives due to their fragile nature. To insert the drive into the slot, depress on the tab of the drive and open the arm of the tray all the way. Insert the drive into the slot, ensuring the drive connector is facing in towards the center of the chassis. When the drive is inserted around 90% of the way, the arm will begin to catch in its slot. Once the arm catches, push inwards on the arm, forcing the drive to seat the rest of the way. Repeat this process until all of the drives have been inserted into the chassis. Once all the drives have been inserted, reseat the faceplate. To attach the faceplate, slide the faceplate into the right-hand bezel from the left-hand side. Once a faceplate has been seated in the right-hand bezel, push straight back on the faceplate until you see or hear the black tab click into place. Once in place, take the Dell-issued key and turn the lock in a counterclockwise direction. Now head to the rear of the array. From the rear of the chassis, we can see the control modules and power supplies. Prior to cabling the array, it is recommended that you reseat the components in the rear to ensure a good connection between the components and the chassis. Start with the control modules. Push the two black tabs outwards while pulling the levers on the control module towards you. Once the levers have opened all the way, you will be free to move the controller in its slot. Pull the controller halfway out of its slot and then push it back in. Around 90% of the way, the levers will begin to catch in their slots. Once the lever is caught in its slot, Push the levers inward until you see the black tabs click into place. Once clicked into place, attempt to pull the controller straight back out of the slot without releasing the locking mechanism. If the controller stays in its position, it has been seated properly. Repeat this process on the other controller. After reseating the controllers, you must now reseat the power supplies. Push the two black tabs inwards while pulling outwards on the metal bar. Once the metal bar is extended fully, you will be free to move the power supply in its slot. Pull the supply halfway out of its slot before pushing it back in. Around 90% of the way, the metal bar will begin to catch in its slot. Once the metal bar begins to catch, push the metal bar downwards until you see or hear the black tabs click into place. Once clicked in place, attempt to pull the supply out without releasing the locking mechanism. If the supply stays in its slot, then the supply has been properly seated. If the supply moves around in its slot, it has not been properly seated and must be reseated. Repeat this process on the alternate power supply. Now that you have reseated all the rear components, insert the network cables into the control modules according to how you have set up your network. Once the network cables are installed, ensure the switches on the power supply are in the off position. If either of the switches is in the on position, switch to the off position. This will prevent any improper voltage from being delivered to the chassis during the insertion of the power cables. Once you have confirmed the supply switches are in the off position, insert the power cables. Once the cables have been inserted, turn the switches on the supplies into the on position. Now you must wait for your array to complete the boot process. When the boot process has completed, the controllers in the array will be in the active and secondary states. When the controllers are in the active and secondary states, they will display certain indicator lights. The controllers have three indicator lights attached, the PWR, ERR, and ACCT lights. The PRWR light indicates whether or not the control module is receiving power. The ERR lights indicate when there is an issue during the boot process on the control module. The ACCT light indicates the activity status on the control module. When the controller is in the active state, the indicator lights on the controller will have a power light lit up green, 
and the ACC team light lit up green as well. When the controller is in the secondary state, the indicator lights on the controller will have the power light lit up as green and the ACC T light lit up as amber. When the array has finished its boot process, take the null modem serial cable provided and plug it into the serial port on the active control module. On your computer that has the other end of the serial cable plugged in, open up PuTTY or a similar SSH slash serial client. Select the serial option and set the baud rate to 9600. Open up the connection, then hit enter. After hitting enter, you will see a login prompt. The default username for the array is grpadmin with a default password of grpadmin. Once logged in, you will be prompted to configure the networking settings of the array. Type Y, then hit enter. You will be asked if you wish to proceed. Type yes, then hit enter to begin configuring the network settings. Your first selection will be to set the member name. This name is to be set as the unique name for the particular array. After inputting the member name, you will be prompted to select the first port on the member to activate. Depending on the control module, the options will range from ETH0 to ETH3. If you simply hit enter, the script will automatically select ETH0. After selecting the port, you must then set the IP address. This IP address will be used as the specific IP address for the port you just selected. Once you have set the IP address, you will then need to set the network mask. This mask determines which network range the IP address will be set upon. Once the net mask has been set, you will then set the default gateway. Once this information has been established, the array will activate the port according to the settings you just input. Once the part has become active, the array will need to be assigned to a group. If you already have an Equalogic group and wish for this member to join that group, input the name of the group followed by the group IP address. Once the connection to the group you wish to join has been established, you will be prompted to enter the member management password. This password is specific to allowing the addition of new members to the group. Once input, the member will join the group. If you do not have a group to join the member to, or simply wish to create a new group, input the desired name of the group, followed by the desired group IP address. The group IP address is a virtual address used to cluster members into a group and does not have a designated port to reside on. After inputting the data, the array will attempt to search for the group using the parameters you had just set. Once the array has failed to find the group, you will be asked if you wish to create a new group. Type yes, then hit enter to continue. Next, you will be prompted if you would like to use the information you had entered previously. If you had entered the information correct the first time, simply type yes, then hit enter. If you had input any of the information incorrectly, type no, then hit enter. Then you will restart the group configuration segment. After creating the new group, you will then set the member management password. This password is specifically set to allow other arrays to configure to the group. You will need to enter the password identically twice congruently for the password to be accepted as the new password. After the member management password has been set, you will then set the password for the default account. This will change the default password for the GRP admin account. As with the member management password, the password must be input identically twice congruently in order for the password change to be accepted. Once the GRP admin password has changed, the member will begin to come online with the new group. Wait approximately 10 minutes, then open up your preferred browser. In the address bar of the browser, input the group IP. Once you see a login prompt, enter the login credentials for the GRP admin account. Now that you are logged into the group manager, you will need to set the specific RAID that you would like applied to the member, and the storage pool for the member to belong to. First expand on the members tree, and select the member you had just installed. Once selected, a window will appear asking if you would like to configure the RAID for the array. Select the option yes to continue, and a new window will appear. From the first tab of the new window, you will be able to alter the name of the member and select the storage pool for the member to belong to. A storage pool is a set of arrays that span data related to the pool across the arrays. This feature allows you to have multiple arrays in group for simple management while allowing you to determine what information is shared between which arrays. Arrays in the same group will not span data with other members if they are not within the same storage pool. The default storage pool will automatically be selected whenever configuring the RAID on a new member. Select the storage pool you wish this array to join. Note that the array can be moved from storage pool to storage pool as long as there is enough free space on the remaining members of the pool to relieve the data off of the member prior to removing the member into the new pool. After selecting the storage pool, you will click Next to continue. Select the RAID policy you wish to have configured for this array.
After selecting the RAID policy, there will be an option for RAID accessibility. You can choose to have the data accessible immediately or tell the array to wait until the RAID is verified before allowing access to the storage. Select the option based upon personal preference, then select Next to continue. In this final tab, you will be shown a summary of the configuration you had just set. Select Finish to finalize the options and initialize the RAID. Now that the RAID is initializing, you will need to configure the rest of the ports on the menu member. Navigate to the Networks tab. In this tab, you will see a network configuration for this particular array. The port you had configured during the initial configuration will show up with the specific settings assigned during the initial configuration, while the other ports will be grayed out with no information for either the IP or net mask. Double-click on one of the grayed out ports and a window will appear. Input the desired IP address and net mask, then select the option Enable Interface. Select OK to enact the changes on the port. The port will now activate with the settings applied. Repeat this process until all ports are now active. If you chose to wait for the verification of the RAID before allowing accessibility, you must wait for your RAID to verify before using the array. If you chose to allow accessibility immediately, you may now begin using the array. If any issues arise during the installation process or you have any questions or concerns, please contact us directly. Thank you for choosing the Rocket Platform. The evolution of hardware maintenance. Thanks for watching. This has been another video by the Top 10 USA video production team. We look forward to sharing more content with you going forward, so please check out our YouTube channel and please subscribe so that you get notified whenever we release a new piece of content.